What is going on, Future Focus Nation? My name is George, and I make videos to help you make money investing. And today, I wanted to talk to you about a company that's going to be the first pure play for quantum computing in the stock market. The name of this company is IonQ. They will be merging with a special purpose acquisition company, ticker symbol DMYI. Right now, a lot of special purpose acquisition companies are being attacked and they are very out of favor. But many times, the best opportunities in the market come from areas that are very underloved. That combined with a company that's going to be first to market, I think it's a recipe for success especially in this sector. There is a lot of potential in the quantum computing space. Today, we're going to take a dive into the company and try to identify if this company is worth investing in. With all that said, let's get into it. All right, again, the name of this company is IonQ. Their mission is to build the world's best quantum computers to solve the world's most complex problems, transforming business, society, and the planet for the better. But what is a quantum computer? At its core, a quantum computer is a machine that uses a quantum system like the spin of an electron to do a very specific type of math. This math takes advantage of the uniquely complex behavior of quantum systems, namely entanglement and superposition, to perform calculations that are fundamentally unlike the calculations ordinary computers based on classical physics can perform. In layman's terms, this means that the computers that you and I use, they use a code that's like 101010. However, these computers are so advanced that they go beyond that. They use codes that are directly correlated with quantum physics. It requires counterintuitive physics, precision optical and mechanical engineering, and fine-grained firmware controlled over a variety of components, but the superior results speak for themselves. So the most important part of any quantum computer are its quantum bits or its qubits. Ion Q's qubits are ionized fibrodum atoms, a silvery rare earth metal. Each Wybrodum atom is perfectly identical to every Wybrodum atom in the universe. Moreover, once prepared in a particular stable quantum state, they can remain in that state for very long periods of time. They are so consistent, they are used in one of the most accurate atomic clocks ever built. Uh, right here on the right, you have an example. In a classical computer, the smallest unit of computation is called a bit. A bit can be only one of two possible states, a one or a zero. A qubit has the ability to be in a complex superposition of these states, allowing for a much larger computational space. Imagine only being able to point at the North or South Pole versus being able to point anywhere on the globe. And down here you have an example. The left is the one zero that we were talking about. And on, and on the right, you have the ability to move in all directions. So here, the company is led by Peter Chapman. His career began at 16 in MIT AI lab under Marvin Minsky. He led a technology for Amazon's prime division. Uh, you have their co-founder and CTO. He's worked at Duke and Bell Laboratories. Uh, you have some uh, Sally Yu who's worked at Uber. You have David Bacon who's worked at Google. So you have a vast uh, wealth of knowledge in this group right here. So as I said before, they're the only public pure play quantum opportunity. So they're gonna be the first to market. Unparalleled technological advantage. 32,000 times more powerful than the competing quantum systems. It's a massive opportunity. Experts expect a total addressable market of approximately 65 billion by 2030. Quantum computation as a service, they currently work with Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and they have their own quantum cloud. They have significant barriers to entry, complex technology protected by extensive patent portfolio. Now, when you're investing in a company, this is something you want, something that has barriers to entry that are difficult. Warren Buffett refers to this as a moat. This means it's difficult for another company to just say, hey, I want to get into the quantum computing space. And even if they did, this company is so far ahead and they have so many patents that they're going to be difficult to compete with, which makes it a good opportunity for investors. Now, this is the transaction overview of the merger. As you can see right here, INQ is going to have a lot of the equity once this is done. And this is something you want to see because the whole point of them coming into market is that they're going to have a lot of equity to actually put a lot of these projects that they have into action. Some of these other SPACs you see, you'll see this ratio here, and the, the company will actually have a lot less of the ratio. Sometimes the pipe investors get more or the SPAC founders get more, and it leaves the actual company, you know, trying to bite at the bit to try to get more equity. And then what ends up happening later on is they have to issue more shares in order to actually get more money. And, you know, it's kind of this cycle that repeats every time that happens. Obviously, the price of the stock goes down because the value of the stock goes down. So uh, 
IonQ is leading the quantum computing revolution. IonQ has brought the world's best hardware to the commercial market with extreme capital efficiency. They were founded in 2015. They have a total venture capital investment of 84 million. They have 61 patents and applications. They have 63 employees. They've spent 49 million to date and they have six hardware generations. As you can see here in 2015, uh, Harry Weller approaches Monroe and Kim who are the founders of the company and INQ is born with a $2 million seed. The most recent is that Monroe and team announced a logical qubit with only 13 physical qubits. INQ announces 32 qubit quantum computer with an expected quantum volume of 4,194,304, smashing record for most powerful quantum computer. As you see here on the far left, these are the current investors. Some of the big names here are Airbus, Lockheed Martin, Amazon, and Samsung. The next technological revolution is quantum. INQ is poised to be the first mover in the quantum revolution, ushering the next great age of productivity. And all, all this is here is the roadmap, a uh, roadmap of where we've been and where we're going. It talks about the industrial age, where we're currently at in the information age, and quantum computing taking a shortcut here to get us to the quantum age, breakthroughs in energy, medicine, materials, science, machine learning, and more. Focus on the results and not the height. So they have the most usable qubits. They have the highest quantum volume by many orders of magnitude. They have the best error correction overhead. Their system's getting smaller each generation. Only systems available on both Amazon Web Services and Azure. They support for most major quantum SDKs and plans for more. And they're the first known simulation of water to approach chemical accuracy. So they're gonna be doing these things in three phases. Phase one, they're expecting two to five billion estimated operating income and their technical barrier to entry will be error reduction. Then phase two, they're expecting 25 to 50 billion and technical barrier to entry will be error correction. And then phase three, they're estimating 450 to 850 billion operating income and their technical barrier to entry will be their modular architecture. As you can see here, IonQ is leading the pack with the potential quantum volume by vendor in December 2020. And you can see they're beating Amazon, they're beating Google, Honeywell, IBM, Microsoft. And as you can see, they're beating them by a long shot. IonQ leads in error correction overhead. As you can see, they're, they're here at a 16 to one correction where their competitors are from anywhere from a thousand to one to a million to one. Upon closing of the merger, the SPAC will change from DMYI to IonQ as the first public pure play quantum computing hardware and software company. We believe IonQ could grow at a pace similar to previous foundational computing companies. So as you can see, this is a really exciting opportunity. What I'm gonna do now is show you a video going more in depth to really paint a picture of what this company has the capability of doing. Fertilizer feeds crops which feed the world, but making fertilizer is not cheap or easy on the planet. Synthetic fertilizer production accounts for 1.4% of the entire world's carbon emissions, more than any other industrial reaction. However, bacteria in soil make fertilizer without any factories or carbon emissions at all, just simple enzymes. So why not copy the bacteria? Because we can't. It's a quantum process, and today's computers don't speak quantum physics. It would take the world's most powerful systems hundreds of thousands of years to simulate what these enzymes are doing. Forty years ago, Nobel laureate Richard Feynman put it this way, Nature isn't classical, damn it, and if you want to make a simulation of nature, you'd better make it quantum mechanical. It was the spark that launched a new grand challenge for humanity, to build a useful quantum computer. A computer that, instead of calculating with the simple ones and zeros of today's classical computers, uses quantum mechanics, the mathematical rules that govern the atomic building blocks of the universe. A computer like this would revolutionize science, industry, and everyday life. But from the very beginning, it was understood that building a useful quantum computer was going to be a staggeringly hard engineering problem. Hard, but not impossible. And IonQ's founders have been blazing the trail with groundbreaking quantum computing research for over 25 years. In 2015, our founders, Chris Monroe and Jung Sang Kim, decided it was time to turn that research into a quantum computer anyone in the world could use. IonQ was born. 
in the five years since its founding, Ion Q has remained at the forefront of this quest, the first simulation of water, the first trapped ion system on the cloud, and in October 2020, the world's most powerful quantum computer, a 32 qubit system that is a staggering 32,000 times more powerful than its closest competitors. And now, anyone in the world can access Ion Q systems via Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and the Ion Q Quantum Cloud. Feynman's idea is now a reality. We are at the dawn of the quantum age, and while Ion Q's history is impressive, the most amazing part is yet to come. Just like the steam locomotive, manned flight, and the integrated circuit, quantum computing is a groundbreaking, world-changing technology. It will allow us to solve problems previously thought unsolvable. Imagine increased efficiency in every sector from finance to logistics to energy. Smarter artificial intelligence, innovations that can combat climate change, from better solar cells to direct carbon capture, perfectly targeted pharmaceuticals that can eradicate chronic diseases, an electric car that can drive for months on a single charge. In the 19th century, it was the era of machines. In the 20th century, it was the era of information. And in the 21st century, while we're still defining it, is likely to be the era of quantum computing. In just a few short years, IonQ computers will have the power to change everything at every scale, from how we understand the tiniest molecules to how we move people, parcels, and information around the entire globe. The age of quantum is upon us, and IonQ is leading the way. Now I want to show you a video from the CEO where he's being asked about this merger and asked about the future of the company. So why SPAC and why now? Hey, Emily, thanks for having me on today. Um, well, as you mentioned in your intro, uh, quantum computing is an entirely new paradigm for computing. And as with many technologies, it requires a significant investment to bring them to market. Um, and becoming a public company gives us access to capital and resources to make quantum a reality. So how do you believe quantum computing will change our lives as we know it and tackle real world problems? Like what will be different possible as a result? Um, well, you know, uh, quantum computing, many people expect that quantum computers will be able to solve many of mankind's kind of grand challenges everything from uh, direct carbon capture to new drug discovery, new batteries, um, solving strong AI, uh, improving machine learning. It's, since we're talking about um, you know, just a much bigger computer, it's kind of hard to say where it won't be used. Um, and I do think it's kind of an interesting question if you were to go back to Intel and ask them in the 1970s, what did they think those little microprocessors we're going to be used for? The answer back then was it was going to make a great calculator. And they couldn't really foresee the internet or, or you know, cell phones happening. I think we're in that same place today for quantum. Um, you know, there's a bunch of things that we know about today that we use classical computers for. But I bet you 20 years from now, we'll look back at this and people will look at my answer and go out and go, wow, you couldn't have imagined X, Y, and Z. And so we're exactly the same place kind of for quantum as we were in the 1970s. You mentioned carbon capture and I know Bill Gates' Breakthrough Energy is one of your investors. You also worked at Amazon as the director of engineering for Prime for many years. And I'm curious, how could quantum computing revolutionize a company like Amazon? Well, um, you know, the so quantum computing is good at solving optimization problems with a cost function. Um, and so uh, it turns out many business problems can be converted into an optimization problem. So as an example, what is the optimal route to deliver a package to a consumer? Um, that's something that logistics companies are extremely interested in. Because if you can just shave off a mile or two off of a driver's daily delivery route, you can save a great deal of money. So for somebody like Amazon on the amazon.com side, not the AWS side, you know, they should have a lot of interest in the logistics applications for quantum. Um, and then of course you mentioned Bill Gates, there it's things like direct carbon capture and better batteries. Um, 
and even you know chemical applications. It turns out that uh, in the production of fertilizer is one of the most polluting industries on the planet. It accounts for about 1% of all the carbon emissions. But bacteria know how to do it in soils without any extra energy. So we just don't have a, a classical computer that can do that modeling. But with a quantum computer, we'll be able to do it. We can unlock the secrets of how nature does it without polluting the environment. So as you can see, the use cases for quantum computing are limitless. And you have the opportunity to get into a company that's going to be the first to market in this sector. But what do you guys think? Is this a company that you're interested in? Is this a company that you might invest in? Let me know in the comments below. As always, invest in me and press that like button. Invest in yourself and smash that subscribe button. Until next time.